Good morning. We welcome you to the radio worship service of St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. We're glad that you could join us. We pray that this is a time of blessing for you. I am Pastor Philip Heyer, and I will be your worship leader. Members of St. Stephen's, under the direction of organist Dale Grolke, will be singing the hymns today. Later in this service, Pastor Paul Stratman will speak to us under the theme, Why Does God Allow Hardship? We will begin with the singing of the hymn, Oh, That I Had a Thousand Voices. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, 
with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. will also be the sermon text for this Sunday after Pentecost, is recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On another occasion, as Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing along the border between Samaria and Galilee. When he entered a certain village, ten men with leprosy met him. Standing at a distance, they called out loudly, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went away, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, thanking him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus responded, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Get up and go your way. Your faith has saved you. The word of the Lord. After the congregation has sung verses from the hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, Pastor Stratman will present his message, Why Does God Allow Hardship?
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear radio listeners. As Christian people, we firmly believe that God is our loving Father, and along with that we believe that he is almighty and all-powerful. Nothing is beyond his control because he made all things. That's what the first line of our creeds say. Now take those two thoughts, God is a loving Father and God is Almighty, and put those together with the hardships great and small that people have to deal with. If God is loving and God is in control, why does he allow these things? Why do we have to deal with any trouble at all if our all-powerful God is watching out for us? We do find an answer in today's gospel of Jesus healing the lepers. These lepers were about as bad as could be. Someone afflicted with leprosy would lose feeling in fingers and toes, and then bones would become brittle and collapse, and skin would develop bumps and knots and become thick, sometimes flaky and white. It wasn't contagious from person to person. Still, in the Old Testament, it was a symbol of corruption, and lepers had to live separately from family and friends, separate from the rest of society. It was like a living death. And then they came to Jesus. They must have heard about him, who he was, and what he could do. When they heard, what they heard moved them to faith, and their affliction moved them to cry out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Afflictions can serve God's good purpose too. One of my dear teachers said, the idea that bad things are bad for you is a bad idea. We have Romans 8.28 as God's promise to us, All things work together for good to those who love God, who have been called according to his purpose. All things. The things that seem good and the things that seem bad. God can use afflictions to show us our weaknesses and needs. Is that fun? Never. Is that necessary? Absolutely. Think back to the very beginning. The very first temptation was not just about eating apples. It was about disobedience. It was about rejecting their place under God and his creation. It was about Adam and Eve doing their own thing and being their own bosses. And so the end of Genesis 3 is about God stepping back and saying, you think you can get along fine without me? Fine, I'm going to step back and hold back on some of my blessings and some of my protection. You'll have to deal with thorns and thistles and toil and pain and finally death, all because you forgot that I am God and that you are here to obey and serve. Either hardship serves as discipline to teach us our weakness, our need, and our place under God and his creation, Or if we refuse to learn, it serves to give us a taste of the wages of sin. Have we seen this? Have we experienced it ourselves? Thinking, I'm going to plow forward, I'm going to do my own thing, I've got to be me. Or when we feel some kind of need, we put our love and trust in whatever it is we want to pursue this drug, this bottle, or sitting myself in front of this screen will be my escape, my solution, my relief. And then what happens? You follow your own will and follow your own pride and do your own thing rather than respecting your neighbor's life, property, and name, or living to glorify God with your body and mind as his temple, you find that your own desires lead you to a total disaster. The Proverbs say, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. 
Sometimes it works like this. We live as we please. We hurt others and end up hurting ourselves even worse. And then we realize that we're at the bottom. Then when we've afflicted ourselves, God can use that. Martin Luther once said, God creates out of nothing. Therefore, until a man is nothing, God can make nothing out of him. When we hit bottom, then we realize our weakness and emptiness and the reality of what we've done. And then we're ready to repent, to open our hearts instead of harden them. In 2 Corinthians, St. Paul wrote about pressure and said, We felt like we got a death sentence, because, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who can raise the dead. Because of their afflictions, these lepers were very aware. We are weak. We need Jesus. We need what he alone can give. So they cried out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They cried out in faith. Faith doesn't really have any power of its own. It taps into God's power. Faith isn't the outlet, it's the plug. It's not the gas pump, but the empty tank. In faith, we open our hearts and lives to God's power. Have pity on us means only you can help us. An arrogant or proud heart won't say that. A broken and open heart will. And the message of the Savior who can help is the only thing that can open the heart. The affliction can show us our needs. The preaching of law and condemnation can show us the reality and the need. But the gospel soothes that broken heart. And Jesus helped. He healed all ten of the lepers. He didn't do it because of anything in them, because their intentions were right or because they asked in just the right way. No, he helped because he could. He helped because it was his mission to seek and save the lost. He helped because it was also his mission to help and befriend his neighbors in their need as only he could. Only one came back to say thanks. Did Jesus know that would happen? Of course, he knew all things. But in his grace, he healed them all. One writer used to say that God's grace is really one-way love, directed from God to us. There's no payment given on our part, nor any payback expected on God's part. If it would be, then grace wouldn't be grace at all. But Jesus heals them all because he is pure grace, and he is pure mercy, and he is pure pity and love. Jesus' power to heal here is amazing, but his grace here is just as amazing. Then there's the power and the healing. At that time, leprosy was a disease that had no cure. It didn't heal itself, and you didn't just get better with time. It was much like a death sentence, a lengthy one. But they were all healed. Yes, it was a shame that only one stopped to say thanks, but I find it hard to blame the other nine. They had their lives back. They were running to Jerusalem to have the priests declare them cleansed so they could run back home. They were eager because their prayer, have pity on us, was answered. Maybe the nine were marveling too much at what Jesus did for them and not enough on the one who just showered them with his grace and power. Someone might think God allows us to draw God allows hardship to draw us to himself. A gracious benevolent presence would be much more pleasant than hardships. We don't realize how proud and arrogant we really can be. We don't know how crusty and hard our hearts can be. 
if God set everything up in our lives so that everything would just be perfect, then we'd end up like the rich man in Jesus' story from, of the rich man and Lazarus who lived in wealth and luxury and ate his fine food and wore his fine clothes, and those things became his God. Idols he didn't realize he had. Ah, this is the life. This is my comfort. This is my highest good. And then he ended up in hell because he had forgotten the giver of all good. The wealth by itself wasn't a bad thing. The fine clothes and fine food by themselves weren't bad things. The misdirected attention was the bad thing. Forgetting the giver of all good gifts was the bad thing. The letter to the Hebrews says, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his own dear children. Discipline is not the same as punishment. Discipline has the goal to teach and lead you. It has the word disciple right in it. He wants to lead us to himself, keep us close, so that we keep praying and calling to him, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our radio choir will now sing the hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness.
Let us pray. Good Lord, you provide for the needs of your people because your mercy endures forever. Give us each day our daily bread, and keep us mindful of your gifts, that we may always receive them with thanks. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Savior, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. close our service with the singing of the hymn, O Bless the Lord, My Soul. You have been listening to the radio service from St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Beaver Dam. This radio service is broadcast every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. here on WBEV. You can also join us for worship in person. Our services are at 8 and 10 o'clock Sunday mornings, 6.30 Thursday evenings, and 1.30 Friday afternoons. If you would like a printed copy of today's message or want to contact one of our pastors, please write to us at 300 West Street, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, 53916. You can also find more information and listen to streaming audio of our radio services at www.ssbdwels.com.